getting ready to get started, so we want to welcome you. We're going to ask Steve Baugh, our, our uh, Timonos District Vice Chairman, to offer our invocation, and then I will lead us in the Scout Oath and Law. So everyone uh, mute yourselves um, at this point, and then after the Scout, Scout Oath and Scout Law, we'll unmute so that you can ask questions. So go ahead, Steve. Thank you. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank thee that we could meet this evening. We're grateful for everyone who is attending for their service to our youth. We're grateful for the scouting program. We ask a blessing upon us as participants that we will uh, learn much, contribute where uh, we can. We pray for those presenting that they will be able to share those things that they prepared. We pray for uh, understanding of one another, good communication, and uh, help us uh, to turn our thoughts uh, to our to our youth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Okay, if everyone will make the appropriate scout sign, we will start with the scout oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Now the scout law. The scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. Now, John, you were going to Show us a, a video for the flag presentation at this point. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We want to again welcome everyone to our council wide roundtable. We're up to 122 people in attendance. That's a, a fair number. And uh, we hope that you'll all find something worthwhile to, for your the time you spent here tonight. We want to remind everybody, even though it's the new year and we've gone through recharter, we want to remind everybody to make sure to watch their youth protection training. And if it uh, is approaching an expiry, time frame that uh, to get it taken so that it doesn't expire we don't have to send out reminders so um, that's our youth protection moment for the night I'd like to remind uh, us about training opportunities that are on the uh, utah scouts website and uh, be able to make sure you go out there and look for those uh, training opportunities through this year so that you can be uh, trained and understand uh, your full responsibilities in the scouting program. <clears throat> but we're going to go have you go to your district uh, breakout rooms and get any district information that you might, and then come back to our main session and we'll uh, have a few more pieces of information for you. So, okay, welcome everybody back. I'm going to share my screen for just a minute. Um, I've got two things to talk about. Um, one is our round table, round, ta round table safety moment. Goggle ball has become a very popular uh, in the U S as a game played, uh, in octagonal pit and, and is considered a general version of dodgeball. They want to emphasize that this be a, a safe act activity. And that means that uh, players must be of similar age. It's suggested that uh, only a two age, two year span be be a, be a good rule between those who are playing. 
and uh, um, the players can't hold the ball or pick it up or throw it, consider this surface that it's played on that it'd be safe, not uh, mud pits or um, uh, concrete, and uh, always have adult supervision with the, uh, that activity to make sure that kids are are safe. Mike, go ahead and take a few minutes now and talk about talk about your uh, NYLT course. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, I we also have Alice Miller uh, on with us. Uh, between the two of us, we the we are the course directors for the two courses that our council is uh, sponsoring this year. We have. Uh, one that is being held at Camp Maple Dell, June 10th through the 15th. And we have another one that is being held at Camp Bartlett, uh, July 22nd uh, to uh, July 27th. Uh, so we are excited to be able to be hosting two courses this year and looking for support in a couple of ways. One is we are we are about to, to start our first staff uh, developments and trainings uh, at the end of January. And we do still have a few, uh, some spots available for staff. Uh, if you're interested in, or you know of any youth that are interested in doing that, uh, on the NYLT page, you can get to a, a link there that says apply to be on staff, apply now. And then that's an online form to fill out if you have a, a scout interested in being on staff. Uh, secondly, obviously we're, we're, we're doing this training, these trainings to help the units to run at the best they can run. And, and I, I, I like the, the comment that was brought up about uh, Wood Badge because uh, those of you who have attended Wood Badge, you know the, the, the benefit and value it brings to you individually and to the unit. Uh, to the scouting unit. Uh, same thing would be true as you have youth that are that have gone through national youth leadership training, uh, which uh, is almost or almost the same as would badge. Uh, it, it's it's presented same topics are presented, but they're presented in uh, a slightly different uh, manner for the youth. But the topics are shared, so. Adults who have gone through Wood Badge and youth that have gone through NYLT, you, you'll be speaking the same language and you have the same understanding of, of what's possible. So I guess I'm, I'm looking for do support going to Wood Badge adults and make sure to send your youth to NYLT. Uh, again, it will make everybody uh, in those units uh, have a better experience youth and adults alike. Alice, do you want to share any comments? Yes, I think you kind of said it all. Um, sorry we didn't have a youth representative tonight. We wanted to make sure that everybody knows this is such a great asset to their units. Um, and as Bade and Pell said, fun with a purpose, right? So this is 14 and up, and we hope to see you there. 13 for participants. Okay. They're age 13 and above. Staff, uh, should be by the time of the course uh, should be age 14. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I add just one thing on that? Don't just sure. say, but be ready to let them use what they learned when they come back. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. That's awesome. Thank you. So Akela's council is everything you need to know Cub Scouts. Um, it's going to be September 11th to the 14th at Camp Kiesel. Um, and there are a lot of program changes coming uh, over the next few months um, and into the summer that uh, we will be covering to make sure that you know how, know what is expected with the new changes and, and how to make that function in your unit. I'm going to share my screen. That leads us to our, hot, our roundtable hot topic. And that's the Cub Scout program updates. And I think our Cub Scout session is going to cover that in more detail. But that's one of the things they wanted us to talk about was the, the, the updates that are coming. Um, you can see right there, the top Bobcat will, Bobcat will become a required adventure for each rank. 
instead of being its own rank. So Bobcats is, is making a uh, somewhat of a change in the in the program. So we're ready to move on to our uh, roundtable uh, breakout rooms and get. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Okay, so how is everyone doing this evening? I'm assuming everyone is doing well, right? Rested, ready to go ahead and start your one hour a week again? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Quick question. Yes. I have a quick question just about the Achilles Council. Yes, um, is that like... Is that something you can bring your family to? Like, if I'm going to the training, is it like a family camp out? Is well, beside no. that, or just a? It is not uh, okay. this time. Um, if they sometimes they combine it, but no, not this time. It is only the training, the Cub Scout training. So that is a great training for any uh, Cub Scout leader coming in into the program. Or if you haven't been to a to a Kalis Council for I don't know 10, 15 years, 20 years, you can go again and refresh your memories. <laughs> the program has changed several times since then. And speaking of changes in the program, uh the plan. So my name is Valeria. For those of you that don't know me, I am um Timpanogos District Activities Chair and also Julie Smith uh, from Orem Scout Shop. Uh, between the two of us, we cover the Cub Scout session for our Timpanogos District Roundtable. So tonight uh, we decided that it would be great to kind of touch the updates for the new program. Let's go into the PowerPoint presentation. Let me share my screen with you. Let me find it first. Okay, so I don't know how many of you know about the new program, but it is uh, gonna be an updated um, Cub Scout program that will start take effect on June 1st okay, of this year. So the whole point of the updates for the uh, for the Cub Scout program is to make it fun for everyone, not just for the Cub Scouts, but also for leaders and the parents, um, make it easy for everyone to get involved in the program. So, um, you know, make it more unified and simple to understand and run it, okay? And as I said earlier, the program takes effect at June 1st of 2024. So here are the four main areas of improvements. It's the Bobcat, uh, the improvements are, uh, the adventures are going to be a little bit changed and improved. There is change to Wivolo's rank and there is change to awards. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into that. Let's see. So here's uh, the big change as far as adventures go that they did. Every single rank, to achieve angle, every single rank, you have um, six required adventures and two elective adventures. And it will be... Um, you know, it will be the same for every single rank. Uh, those six required adventures will be the same topic or theme. So as you can see right now in front of you, uh, you know, everyone will cover outdoors, like for lions is mountain lion, for tigers, tigers in the wild, so on until they reach Arrow of Light with outdoor adventures. So they will be the same um, uh, theme throughout, but different levels for each one according to you know maturity level of the kids because like wibblos uh they i believe they go like on a two mile walk something like that lions we don't want to do that to our lions so it's a little less involved for them so um uh, the biggest reason for this um one of the reasons is that you can run your meetings unified for the pack, this is gonna be a good solution for especially packs that have combined dens. So if you have to run a den meeting with, you know, lions, tigers, wolves, you guys can hit a required adventure and um, hit the requirements for every single den 
and it's easier this way. This is an example of, you know, the outdoors one. So yeah, as I said, we will always walk two miles, lions take a walk outside, spending 20, 20 minutes looking at things. So different level, but the same type of adventure for everyone. And that will be throughout all of the required adventures, okay? So Bobcat, Bobcat gets a new look. It will be a belt loops and pins. It will no longer be a rank. It will be an adventure. Um, the Bobcat adventure uh, is designed to be the first required adventure for every single rank. As you know, right now, lions would never do Bobcat. They they weren't uh, they they didn't earn Bobcat rank before. Now every single um, den level will start with rank level will start with Bobcat adventure. Um, it will progress, the requirements for it will progress progress uh, with years, just as all the other adventures, okay? Uh, so like, here's an example for it. For lions, you know, you get to know um, members of your den and lions are, you know, we don't, we don't need them to recite. We don't expect them to, to memorize. Uh, scout oath and scout law but with the help of the partner or den leader adult partner or den leader you know they read it to them and things like that but for for bears you know it's more involved so then yes you guys are reciting it the one thing that's uh uniform for all of them is the very last requirement we're still we're keeping the um uh, the safety pamphlet. So with your parent, like your guardian, you have to do the activities in the booklet, how to protect your children from child abuse parents guide. So that one is still in place. Okay. Um, you can see changes for the arrow of light. We'll touch it a little bit later, but right here, you can see in Bobcat changes for the arrow of light. If you notice, whoever is familiar with uh, Arrow of Light requirements, Scouting Adventure is incorporated in that Bobcat uh, adventure now. So, and like number seven, with your patrol or your uh, or with your parent legal guardian, visit a BSA a Scouts BSA troop. You know, demonstrate the Scouts BSA sign and handshake and salute. So it's incorporated into the Bobcat requir Bobcat requirement because. Um, let me see, uh, right here, if you saw earlier, Arrow of Light, Scouting Adventure is no longer in that list of Arrow of Light requirements. Okay, so um, also they overworked how adventures are presented. In front of you, you see what a wolf, uh, code of the wolf currently is, how it looks like in the book, right? So we have um, a lot of different options and what um, we, we're we going away from is different options that confuse people and complicate things. So this is how it used to look like and this is how it's going to look like now. So simplified language, uh, less requirements throughout all of the uh, ranks, the, the adventures are going to look like this. So... Um, the goal is that a lot of the most of the adventures are going to be able to be completed uh, completed within one den meeting. Some of them will be more than one den meeting adventure, you know, but most of them we're trying to make sure that they are completable in one den meeting. Okay, awards are con being converted into adventures. Also, so um, here's an example of things. Pinewood Derby, Rengara Regatta are becoming a race time for every single um, rank. Then um, we're adding fishing for every single rank. It's not only bear goes fishing anymore. Uh, also, every single rank uh, will uh, have be able to complete cycling. And swimming is added to other ranks as well. So instead of these being patched and a separate uh, and a separate um, award, now it's incorporated into the electives. And um, when the whole, like if you're having a pack meeting on one of these things, you know, like Pinewood Derby, 
everyone gets a look for for being there like they're saying that it simplifies things but you know cub scout leaders always want to go over the top and we will of course have other awards for them but in case you know you didn't want to come up with like a participation ribbon or thing like that everyone gets a belt loop for participation in the in the pine wood derby okay as far as stem adventures same thing so science technology engineering and math are four um major components right uh uh of stem adventures the Science has been, was already incorporated in a lot of um, elective adventures. Actually, the technology, engineering, and math sides needed work. So they added elective um, adventures to cover those as well. So, same thing. These are being converted into, um, into the adventures, elective adventures for every rank. Okay, this is like a list for you of adventures. The lighter color is the existing one. Um, the next level is the new additional one, and the bottom, like yes. darkest color, is the uh, shooting awards, and they are earned the same way at the camp, you know and a place that's registered to run these shooting events. So no changes there as, well, it's as far as, the but they will be belt loops. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about Arrow of Light. Uh, the biggest change in the program, I feel like, is the Arrow of Light. Uh, because before it used to be, you know, we will lose one, we will lose two, or we will lose four. First year we will lose, second year we will lose. So we will lose an arrow of light will be separated 100%. We will lose is no longer a rank that prepares Cub Scouts for Scouts BSA. We will lose is just another rank uh, of Cub Scouting going forward. Arrow of light is its own standalone rank uh, that will be preparing Cub Scouts to enter Scouts BSA. Um, and again, this all takes effect June 1st after your crossover, okay? So don't implement any of this now, okay? Have your arrow lights or willows finish their year, whichever way you're having it right now. But just remember, these changes start June 1st. Okay, so um, I touched it a little bit. The Bobcat requirements for Arrow of Light include uh, the scouting uh, adventure. They choose their patrol name, elect a patrol leader, you know, uh, demonstrate BSA, scouts BSA science, salute handshake, and visit the group. So the biggest thing is that now we are officially, you know, have a timeline for this that Arrow of Light dance meet yeah. with the BS Scouts BSA troop the very right. first thing of their yeah. rank year so in September what other natural and uh really? sorry I just got distracted on John's uh message but anyway so in September you meet with a scout troop <laughs> and the whole point of this is that you your arrow of light friends you know gets used to visiting with a troop that once February and crossover time comes, they, they know where they're going and they like have friends there already. Um, so this upgrade update was done in collaboration with National Scouts BSA Committee. Uh, they discussed what's the best way to do this and this is what they came up with. The complete air of light badge of rank is designed to prepare Scouts BSA, not just one event. You know, because before Weebelows and Aerolites had same um, elective adventures, so now they want completely separate. Um, another difference is that Weebelows will remain in blue uniforms um, with their neckerchief, a Weebelows neckerchief, and Weebelows hat. Arrow of Light is Scouts use BSA uniform. Um, 10 shirt, green bottoms, and Arrow of Lights will not have a hat and will not have a neckerchief. 
So those are the biggest differences. Now, um, at the time when, you know, like the, you kind of decide for your unit uniforming. Our unit uniform is, uh, our unit is 100% uniformed. Uh, with this change, um, some parents, Wibolo's parents have chosen already to upgrade to um, 10 shirts, green bottoms, and that's okay. You know, some, if the kids grew out of the blue uniform and they don't want to invest in another one, that's fine. It's up to the parent, parents when to do that switch. Uh, this is the guideline that we should strive to. But, you know, if the new Arrow of Light Cub Scout still fits in their blue uniform and their, you know, uniforms are not cheap. So if they're not ready to switch into tan shirt and green bottoms, that is totally fine. They can do it throughout the year or closer to the end of the year. So um, another yeah, big difference that... Um, New handbooks, they the Wibbles and Arrow Lights are gonna separate, split up each level, each then uh each rank will have their own uh handbook. Of the list that I showed you earlier of the elective adventures, I don't know if you noticed, but Arrow of Light has significantly less smaller number of electives, just because Arrow of Light is you know is gonna be working towards that um Scouts BSA transition. Um, so, um, content from, uh, of the era of light handbook, half of it will be all era of light requirements and electives. And then, uh, I believe in the back of it, that's what they, they were saying in the, um, in the conference, uh, uh, the, the, like last part of the book will have, um, scout badge of rank requirements. So the Arrow of Light Cup Scouts will be able to see um, what's the requirements for this scout badge and um, like know what to prepare for. Um, but again, it's there not to be worked on necessary while you while you are, while they are Cup Scouts Arrow of Light. Remember that they can only start working on their on those requirements once they're becoming part of the troop. Um, so once they uh, cross over to a troop, they don't necessarily have to invest in the new handbook right away. They can hold on to their arrow light handbook and uh, go by go by those requirements. Okay. Placement of ranks. I know a lot of people always confused about that. What do I do? Where do I put? Which one is the first? But I didn't. But we didn't earn the lion. So this is like you know simplified version. Put your ranks in the order you earned them. You know, if the Cub Scout joined when the Cub Scout is lion, in the middle picture you can see the first rank earned goes up top lion. The second goes to the side and then the third one goes to the side and the fourth one is on the bottom. So if line wasn't earned, the first rank is tiger, so it will go top center. Kind of simplified, you know, so you don't have to remember, oh, which one goes on the left, which one goes on the right, is lion here or wolves here, no. So just the first one earned, then the second one earned, third one earned, and fourth earned in the bottom. Every single uh, rank will get their own new upgraded um, handbooks. Lion and Tiger's handbook will become more similar. Um, they will have a lot of activities for those um, age appropriate dens, okay? Um, and they will include the uh, parent partner guidebook as well. And then Wolf Bear Wibbles and Arrow of Light will have their own uh, handbooks. Okay, so I have I have a question here. Go ahead before you go forward. Can, are the ranks going to be standalone? Say somebody came in as a tiger or as a lion, but then didn't do tiger or wolf. 
Can they still come in and do bear and we blows an arrow of light? Yes. So okay. basically, um, yep, the ranks are standalone. So if you have someone okay. join in second grade, they start on their wolf. They don't have to go back and do line and tiger. It's totally. So it's, you know, okay. the rank, every rank is age appropriate. Okay, perfect. That's, I was just making sure because before you had to always go back and get that bobcat. But with yes. the bobcat being included, uh -huh. that's why I was hoping that it was not. Yep. Let's go yep. back. Yep, we're good. Okay, thanks. Okay, so Mary, do you know if the handbooks are going to be a little more, less expensive than the current? I have no idea on that. I cannot help you with that. Julie, can you help us out with that? What was the price of them? They haven't told me anything. Well, when they get here, I'll know. And I feel like that's what, you know, everyone, when they get here, we'll know. Okay, so for us as Cub Scout leaders, this is where we get our information from. So scouting.org, we, and we go into Cub Scout Adventures, we go, we go into Cub Scout section, then Cub Scout Adventures. This will take effect June 1st. It is not active yet, so don't look for it. It's not there yet. They will uh, make it live June 1st. So this is how it's going to look like, give or take. This is a mock-up for now, but that's um, or an orientation for us. We'll be able to go in and see every rank. This is for the leaders. This is our resource. Uh, we're dropping den leader experience that we had for from Scoutbook. And this is like our handbooks and things like that. So we go in and we choose the Cub Scout rank that we are working towards. So let's say we chose line. And then you'll have all the adventures required and then all the electives. You choose the adventure that you want to go to. And then it gives you a snapshot of adventure. So it gives you all the requirements. It gives you a safety moment that will tell you what are your restrictions on that activity? What do you need to make sure you have or don't have? Like if you're going outdoor, like camping, you know, it'll tell you that you need to have blue trained leaders and things like that. Then you choose a requirement and requirement one, get to know your members. This is the Bobcat uh, adventure. And it will give you three options. You can either make a den flag or make a den doodle or name a ball game, name ball game, play that game. So you choose what you wanna do. So this is kind of a little snapshot of what it's gonna look like for us, okay? Anyone have questions? It was a little bit fast and a lot. Any further information coming in, Cup uh, Chat Live is a great source. So this um, QR code will take you to um, the Aaron on scouting, and you can watch previous Cup Chat Lives on it and look for the future ones. And this one is the official um, BSA page where the program updates are posted. Okay. And here's the timeline that they're trying to stick to. So March and April is where we should be looking for those scout handbooks. Okay. Throughout January, February, and March, April, and May, they'll have more cop chats going on, talking about these changes and talking about implementing these changes. Okay. We'll stop sharing. Let me look at the questions. I'm excited about the changes. I think it'll make things a lot easier, especially with smaller packs of running bins together. I agree with that, Julie. I've had a very small pack, and so I've done multi-den meetings the whole time, and it's been interesting to try to make everybody do the same adventure or the same activities and still get ranks <laughs> or adventure stuff. Yes, and I feel like that's the most, you know, the biggest thing is that they want to make sure it's easy for everyone and make sure it's fun for not only the Cubs Cubs, you know, but also leaders and parents. So it's not that stressful. I know this was a lot of information. It's just, I want you to remember four key aspects is that one is Bobcat is becoming a required adventure for every single rank. And your den leaders should plan on having that done the, as a first den meeting of the year. Okay, so 
uh, beginning of September or end of August, whenever you're resuming your year. A second one is um, Weeble Ozone Arrow of Light then split. That's a big one. Remember, arrow of light is standalone then. Uh, it's its own program. I when I saw it for the first time, I like, you know, looked at it. I'm like, okay, it's like Scouts BSA light or beta version, you know. So it's kind of easier. Even if you look at let me show you that again. When you look at the at their adventures for arrow of light. Is it at? right here you can see this like you know when we're talking about for example citizenship it's council light fire pause for action my community but for L fair for air of light it's citizenship so kind of like merit badges you know a swimming merit badge is a swimming merit or like basketry is basketry like one straight name without you know making it adventures and fairy tale kind of for kids so personal fitness is personal fitness. It's not as stronger, faster, higher. So they're trying to make sure that Arrow of Light prepares Capscots to transition into the troops the best way possible. Valeria, yes. one of the things that I really like about what they've done is they have d broken it down by the grade levels and they have looked really hard at the developmentally appropriate things for that age. So no longer do the little lions have to try to memorize. They're not having them do that until bear when they actually can memorize. So that I think there's gonna, gonna be a lot of good changes that um, I'm excited to see. I agree with you, definitely. I feel like it's uh, you know a, a better inclusion also. Um, and yes, on handbooks, I love it. That it's, you know, lion and up top, it says kindergarten for wolves and up top, it's a second grade. So, you know, no one, has, no one has questions or doubts or confusions. And I love the uh, name spot on the book on the front. Yes, right up front in the middle. It's just the, all the little details they put into this. I agree. I have questions on a couple Cub Scout topics that don't relate to the new program, if Go we ahead. have time to take those. Go ahead. Okay, my first question is that we've got a family in our pack who has a daughter who just turned five. She is in preschool, and they're mm -hmm. wondering if she can join our lion den. Um, and it seems to me like the Actually, I guess maybe this says go ahead because next year it's all going to be totally different. Maybe that's just what I'll tell her. But I was wondering, you know, if she did that, you know, I, I assume she would just need to repeat Lion when she's in kindergarten next year. Um, does, does I don't know if anyone has thoughts about whether we should let a five-year-old preschooler join our Lion Den. See, and I thought they were pretty particular about kindergarten, not age. Okay. So uh, I don't, I don't know. Does anybody know the official? I know what happened with my daughter. Go ahead. I, I don't know what the official, so, cause she turned, she turns five at the very, like at the very beginning of September. And in Utah, September 1st is the deadline for kindergarten. So she missed about like a week. Um, But she's like, she was very, like all of her friends were in that kindergarten, the group that was starting Lions right then. So they said that once she turned five, we could register her. And that was like, I went up the line several people. And when we got up the line to kind of a somebody up there, they said, yeah, just you have to wait until she's five. And it's registered. Now that I don't think that would apply if this were like, you know, January or March and they're turning five. Right, that would be a different thing, but where she was, you know, so close and like it would have been a really big disconnect for her to be with the next group, um, which didn't actually exist. There was no next group. <laughs> so there was also that like she there wasn't anybody for her to be with in that next group. Um, so she is. Yeah, that's how it worked for her. 
That that's great. I think I'll I'll look and see if there's an official policy. And given these changes, if if it's permitted, I think I'll probably just have her join. My other question is on the other end of the pack. So um, hold on, I'm I, gonna I'm gonna just oh. touch that base again. Okay. So I know that officially you can start them join like registering kids as when after they turned five years old online uh, and in any like you know materials when it says. Uh, who can join Lions? Then Lions is a kindergartner. So I'll yeah, leave you with that. Yeah, you gotta keep in mind that the point is, um, you want to keep Cub Scouts in the same level of development overall. You know, as far as their peers go. So they're on the same level, they're doing the same stuff at school and they know what's going on. And does that make sense? Yes, I, I think that does make sense. Um, let me ask my other question if I could real quick. So our Arrow of Light Den has three boys and they're really excited to be in the troop, not the pack. Um, two of them have no interest in getting their Arrow of Light. One of them would kind of like to get his arrow of light. And we, we noticed that in, on March 1st, all three of these fifth graders are able to join our troop. So my question is that if we sign these boys up in our troop and the, that one boy keeps a spot in our pack, can he continue to work on his arrow of light while he's participating in the troop? And uh, no, as soon as they're being registered in the troop, they're done with the pack officially. So if you want them to do Arrow of Light, keep them in the pack. If they're done and are ready to move on, they're done with pack. Does that make sense? Did I express myself right? Anyone wants to correct me? But yeah, as soon as that registration goes through, they're done, you cannot edit format or add anything in for their cups for their cup scout career does that make sense that they can't dual enroll in a troop and a pack. yeah they cannot be dual enrolled in a troop and a pack at the same time i also have a question go ahead if so the age are we going by age or are we going by their grades now so as Rochelle pointed out in her comment, historically, you know, we were able to decide. Now with the way they're printing the, the new handbooks and everything, it's, you know, it's more clear that we're going by grade. Okay, because I have a Weeblo right now that's in fourth grade mm -hmm. and he doesn't even turn 10 until the end of July. My son, is also in fourth grade he's 10 and he'll be 11 in september like two months after the other boy that's in the same grade and they're almost a full year apart so he will be able to do his arrow light because he's in fifth grade he can start on it technically june 1st even though he's still technically only nine correct okay I just want to make sure so I can explain that to the parents. All right, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I just wanted to remind everyone again, as Rochelle said in the earlier breakout, we have a Kalis Council training coming up. Uh, if you don't know what a Kalis Council training, you should learn about it and you should attend. It is a great training for any Cub Scout level leader. Um, you get all the tools necessary there. It is oh my goodness, eleventh to the fourteenth. Thank you, fourteenth. And it's and it's at Camp Kiesel. Camp Kiesel. It is a very fun time. You get to know uh, a lot more people. You create your network of. Um, like-minded people that love scouting, love, love cup scouting, like getting trained and deliver a quality program to our youth. I feel like it's the most important thing. If we sign up for this, you know, and we, if we want to be 
in this program might as well strive to deliver the best quality proper uh, program for our youth. I know this was kind of fast and a lot, especially if you haven't seen any new uh, updates coming up, but make sure you visit, you know, Aaron on, on scouting, uh, follow the uh, cop chat lives and the BSA uh, official changes as they roll out. Does anyone have any other questions? I have a question actually. Go ahead. We historically have had Weeblow's Woods campouts and uh -huh. and experiences. Will we still be able to do that as a Weeblow's Woods, or will it become an arrow of light? At you know, campout is it is it still Weeblow's and arrows of lights or? <laughs> I hear you. Um, me personally, I don't have a lot of experience with Wibbleos Woods, okay. so I would not know which way to direct you. But does anyone here know anything about it? If not, Kevin, we can uh, definitely find out and let you know. Okay. What the cha how how it would look like? Thank you. I guess it would be looking at the Weeblows and Arrow of Light, their camping uh, mm -hmm. if it, and see if they're still able to camp as dens. Yes, the because Weeblos, the Weeblows Woods typically was a father and son's type outing. And so I know that my boys did it. My brothers did it. I mean, decades back. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what I would say is just look at their requirements as far okay. as what they're required. And because I was it was just a gonna father say, and son activity before. Yeah, you know. yeah Weeblow's Woods was actually an introduction to the troop or patrol method for troop. And so uh, generally the Weeblows were invited to, uh, to be involved with a troop uh, overnighter. Uh, is generally where Weeblow's Woods was designed to go. Looking at these new requirements uh, and how Arrow of Light is now uh, required to integrate more with troop and patrol methods, I would I would anticipate that a Weeblow's outing would be more associated with the Arrow of Light requirements for the troop. But don't quote me on that. But that's what I've heard. Look into it more. Yeah. Yeah, with that with that little bit of information that since Wibbles Woods is a little bit more geared toward troop participation, I would say that it would be uh, geared towards if something were to continue on, it would be geared, geared towards the Arrow of Light rank. Okay, and, appreciate it. But I will look into that and I will uh, let you know. Thank you. Any other questions? No other questions. You guys were amazing. Thank you so much for coming over and participating. Hope everyone had a great start for the new year. Um, remember, keep it fun for everyone, not just the kids, but yourself also, because we want good leaders to stick around and not burn out. It's going to be an amazing year for everyone. Um, accept the changes that are coming as a good improvement. Um, if you don't understand something or have questions about anything, feel free to reach out to any of us. You guys are awesome. Keep on scouting and do your best. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.